Okay, just my final thoughts on this issue. Um, before I look, I have to go do my math homework. You know, I've got, I've got a math, I've got my math final tomorrow, but I've got to take care of this while it's still my brain. I'm gonna, I'm gonna provide the sources, which, um, you know, in the first video, I'm gonna provide uh, both the link to the um, actual Penn and Teller bullshit episode and to the debunk, so this way you can get both sides of this. But you know, for those of you, I would strongly recommend viewing my other videos on global warming and uh, hard science and in terms of environmentalism. Like I've dealt with this before, you know. The, the math that is used in half these cases is, you know, like, the ba there's bad math, there's, you know. My concern overall is the fact that we seem to be, we seem to be headed in an area, you know, Dawkins had it right. I mean, I, you know, much as I don't agree with a lot of what he says in terms of religion, you know, much as, you know, much as I, you know, I think that he's used sloppy philosophy before, I will agree with what he said during the enemies of reason. There does seem to be a war on science happening. You know, in terms of alternative faith and the like. But unfortunately, that war on science is also happening amongst the skeptical elements. You know, um, I hate to say it, but you know, you know, there's there's a there's a war on you know, it's it's affecting even the skeptical community. And much as people would not like to admit it, but you know, critical thinking and you know, this this battle on reason is happening even amongst our own ranks, okay? And as a skeptic, one has to be aware of, you know, one has to be constantly evaluating one's own arguments, and double-checking the arguments of other skeptics. And here's the other thing. If you're going to debunk something, go to the peer-reviewed literature before you do a debunk. Don't repeat what other people have said, okay? I mean, you know, if an argument looks good, double-check it with the peer-reviewed literature first, or make sure that at least it's referenced to good peer-reviewed literature before you do that, okay? Because if, you know, if there's not any good peer-reviewed literature to substantiate it first, or if the peer-reviewed literature you're looking at is flawed, then, you know, or if the, you know, like if there's if the, if the criticisms are flawed for some reason, then you've got to take a look at that and reassess your arguments. Um, one prominent example I'll give of this, and if you want, you can uh, feel free to email me, and I'll give you the links to the relevant pages. But um, Richard Weisman, a while back, did a, um, a and both, and also uh, David Marks and another guy, uh, Colbert, no, it wasn't Colbert, Coleman, I don't remember his last name, but David Marks, and anyway, let's just, let's just work with Dr. David Marks. Um, but, um, Dr. David Marks recently did a replication attempt at psychic staring, and, um, you know, and failed to note, uh, variable changes in his, uh, stuff, you know, uh, Rupert Sheldrake's Rupert Shelter, work, and, um, and, uh, Dr. Richard Wiseman, uh, Milton Wiseman, the two who do a lot, they do a lot of culmination work, uh, one of their other ones was at the Gans Belt, but, you know, I've already dealt with that in another video. Um, you know, they, they tried to take a look at a dog called JT, and even though their data matched Rupert Sheldrake's, they claimed they had automatically debunked it. And recently, in an interview on Skeptico, Dr. Richard Wiseman said that his data agreed with uh, Rupert, matched that of Rupert Sheldrake's. So the question is, is that, you know, if the controls were tighter for Rupert Shel uh, for uh, for Wiseman's work, then theoretically speaking, he should have replicated it and not just gone out and just simply said, oh, I automatically debunked it. But, you know, um, I mean, like, you know, you've got to take a look at both sides on a lot of these issues, you know. Like, actually go straight to the peer-reviewed literature, seeing what is said by, you know, scientists and replications in the peer-reviewed literature, and particularly as well, if there's correspondence that's going on between scientists, you know, correcting each other's flaws and the like, go and take a look at, at the actual statistics and the like, you know. A good brush up in statistics courses or in, you know, the actual mathematics and the science would be a good idea. Getting a basic, you know, for example, on, fire, on global warming and the like, get a good solid basis in the chemical laws and in the mathematics going into that, and then take a look at the environmental data. That's what I did, you know, and you know, and that's the reason I came to the conclusions I came to, you know, like the, and where I've expressed the technical details. And I, it's one of the reasons why in my books I refer you to textbooks, so this way you can actually get the formulas going into it as well, you know, to pump for the math for yourself, you know. Um, the same with this, you know, um, go get a good statistics textbook. Take a look at a large chunk of this. Um, you know, if you're wanting some good statistical evaluation as well, look up Jessica Utz. I mean, yeah, she's a side proponent, you know, but, you know, the bulk of it, she actually talks about, you know, effect sizes, effect, uh, you know, statistical significance levels, you know, possible re uh, other reasons for why replications have been an issue, uh, where meta-analysis comes in useful, you know, um, I mean, for example, um, I'll give you a prominent example of one paper that came out that I... Um, back in 1979, in the Journal of Parapsychology, there was a uh, there was a uh, study published on the reverse on the sheep goat effect being turned upside down, 
and um, you know, and another possible variable being entered. They said in that one that they didn't get statistically significant results, um, but because of the fact that they had predicted that it would actually take 200 subjects uh, to get statistically significant results, but in the end they only got 40. So they had they had expected to get only chance levels, meaning that they got the effect size they looked that they were predicting in the right directions. But they had also predicted that they wouldn't get statistical significance because they didn't have the right number of people. They had predicted the effect size. The same goes with aspirin. You know, um, and you know this is a prominent example before. You know, um, aspirin took you know x number of trials. If they had cut back the trials by any further there would have been no proven effect for aspirin whatsoever because it only has a certain effect size. And that's the problem with a large chunk of these um, tests that are being dealt with in terms of the uh, the paranormal and the James Randi challenge and like that. That's another one, which um, another criticism which I would have of Randi's challenge and of um, many of these skeptical tests by the Committee for Skeptical Inquiry and the like is lack of, pro of appropriate sample size uh, or lack of correct and statistical interpretation. Um, luckily, Randi got vindicated on his uh, dowsing experiments. Um, you know, you know, the yeah, they did dowsing for water, but you know they said out of 50 trials or something like that, they got 10 hits. You know, I mean that would have been a reasonable size. For um, Dawkins' experiment, we only saw like what a few people being worked like that. You know, 20, you know, 20 trials, something like that. You know, like the sample size was considerably less. And if it was an effect size of you know only uh, of only like 22 percent, you know, it's not surprising that they'd only get you know, you know, they get at a level which is statistically insignificant. I mean, like you know, if the effect size were down. You know, I mean, maybe the replication would have vindicated uh, Randy, you know, in his lumping the trials together or what have you, but, you know, or, you know, prove that dowsing with water is ineffectual, but, you know, I mean, we didn't actually hear the experiment, you know, we didn't hear how many trials it had, there was no reference to, uh, you know, of Dawkins' work to another peer-reviewed journal, like, he didn't say where, you know, you could go take a look at this, it was just presented on TV, and you can't take a scientific study out of context on TV unless you can actually find the original peer-reviewed journal to take a look in. Now, I know I've drifted a parasite from environmentalism, but you see my point. You know, the the issue here is the fact that we're not looking at science critically enough. Even in the skeptical movement, we're you know we're we're often rejecting science that doesn't confirm with our beliefs. You know, we need to look at evidence on all sides of this issue. And in my case, I would love it if somebody who saw Dawkins show the enemies of reason and happened to know where Dawkins published that paper, uh, you know, for that particular dowsing experiment, um, you know, it, or or if it was even published by peer review, like if. if you know, if, if the method and the full-scale protocol was published somewhere, if somebody could please comment down here and refer me to that, that would be very much appreciated. But you get the idea. Like, you know, there's, you know, there's, there seems to, we're waging a war on science. You know, we're waging a war on unreason here. And it's, hap and, and it's infiltrated into our own movement. It's infiltrated into our own skeptical movement into various areas. And a large chunk of these issues have not been updated. And, you know, and what's worse is the fact that this sort of, you know, this, uh, anti-science, you know, mentality in some cases that has come into the skeptical movement is being passed off as science. You know, we have to be aware that when we are fighting pseudoscience, we have to be constantly looking at our own arguments for, in, you know, for fallacious reasoning, for misinterpretation of science, for even bad science. You know, we have to be aware of that. And from what I've seen of the bulk of the popular skeptic movements, you know, Ray Hyman and Michael Shermer accepted, uh, you know, as, a, as exceptions to the rule. Um, you know, uh, Randy's work as of late seems to be been slipping. Um, you know, the bulk of the skeptical movement, from what I've been seeing, with the exception of some of the peer-reviewed literature, where, you know, there does seem to be some real, relatively good criticism, you know, and even some of that's been flawed, you know, and, and has been criticized by even people independent of the group, you know. I don't want to get into that right now, but, you know, bottom line is, though, is that even with that, you know, it seems that, you know, with the exception of a few, you know, Dawkins and the like, you know, um, you know, in some cases, you know, it seems that the bulk of popular skeptical argument is ignoring actual scientific data in our process of debunking science, yeah, debunking pseudoscience, you know, trying to fight this war. We're adopting the tactics of the enemy, and we're becoming more like those we're trying to fight. And, you know, to quote the one good quote out of that episode of Penn and Tell Bullshit, the end never justifies the means. And, um, in this case, neither does it mean, you know, rejecting science, like Penn and Teller did in this particular episode, and like, uh, you know, they did as well with the ESP episode, and like, um, you know, and like that we are doing right now in terms of, um, you know, in terms of dealing with both parasite with, uh, with global warming, um, with large chunks of other data. You know, we're, you know, con conservatives. You know, people who are conservatives are still just simply saying, like, the science isn't in yet, or, or the, oh, the, the, science, the IPCC is bullshit, it's all biased by governments, you know, trying to, you know, exploit people for a carbon tax, which is actually an ad hominem attack circumstantial. I mean, you know, like, they'll resort to this sort of crap just to reject the science out of hand. You know, it's, it's, 
it's the same mentality. I've, I've had this debate with, you know, with a member of the Conservative Party of Canada who I play Ars Magica with every week. You know, this is, you know, this is not too surprising. We need to evaluate our own arguments. We need to take a closer look at the peer-reviewed data, and we need to stop doing this sort of crap on our own side. Toodles.